an existential crisis. An existential crisis in the Mac. I had an existential crisis last week. Contest Toastmaster, ladies and gentlemen, if you are anything like me, you've got no idea what an existential crisis actually means. <laughs> but don't worry, I've done my research and this afternoon I'm going to reveal to you the central principle of existential philosophy. Now I can see that most of you are already on the edge of your seats with anticipation. <laughs> but for those of you who are a bit doubtful, I offer you my ironclad guarantee. Once you understand existentialism, you'll be the life of any party. <laughs> but only if your fellow guests are wearing black turtleneck sweaters and smoking stale French cigarettes. So, the core principle of existentialism is very simple, that our behaviour reveals our character. It's a philosophy that demands that we take responsibility for our behaviour, our choices, our very lives. And an existential crisis occurs when we fail to do so. Would knowing this have helped me when I had a total meltdown in the supermarket last week? I very much doubt it because I knew that I had a choice. I could either man up and take responsibility for the deep frustration I was feeling, or I could blame, apologies to the previous speaker, the evil duopoly of Coles or Woolworths. So I did what any decent self-respecting Australian would do. I blamed the evil duopoly of Coles and Woolworths. And Ladies and gentlemen, it really is their fault because they tempt us, they tease us, they tantalise us with exciting new products and then when we say, yes, I want it, they leave us high and dry. I was in the spices aisle searching for pepper when the crisis hit and I remember the old days when buying pepper was simple. You had a choice of ground white pepper or ground black pepper. And back then, the white pepper was by far the more popular. Now, I need to address the elephant in the room. The reason that the white pepper was more popular back then was not because people were racist. <laughs> Absolutely not. It's just that the white pepper felt pretty, more familiar. It was the kind of pepper you take home to eat your parents. <laughs> but times changed and our tastes changed as well. We began to appreciate the more robust flavour of black pepper. And then, in the 1980s, a culinary tsunami swept across Australia. Something that transformed this nation from a post-colonial backwater into an epicurious paradise. I'm referring, of course, to the arrival of the wooden pepper grinder on our shores. The trouble with pepper is that as soon as you grind it, those volatile oils that give pepper its bite begin to dissipate. The pepper grinder guarantees fresh pepper every time, and it transforms an otherwise mediocre dining experience into something theatrical, <coughs> something almost magical. Would Sir like some freshly ground black pepper on his smoked salmon and avocado? Please. <laughs> Would Sir like some freshly ground black pepper on his sirloin steak? Absolutely. <laughs> Would Sir like some freshly ground black pepper on his panna cotta and berry reduction? Well, I'll try anything once. <laughs> So like any decent self-respecting Australian, I bought myself a wooden pepper grinder. <laughs> and for many decades, it served me faithfully. <clears throat> but lately, it's been supplanted in my affections by this fiendishly clever device. It's not fiendishly clever because it does the work of an expensive pepper grinder at a fraction of the cost. Or because it is so easy to refill. It's fiendishly clever because it's transparent. Which means that my dinner guests can see what refined taste I have in a pepper. <laughs> These days, black pepper is passe. 
Australia has become a rich, diverse, multicultural society. And we need multicoloured peppercorns to celebrate this trend. <laughs> Those at the back may have some difficulty reading this, but originally this contained a pepper medley. A veritable rainbow of black, white, red and green peppercorns. And when I say a veritable rainbow, I actually mean a rather drab rainbow. But until scientists come up with orange, yellow, blue and indigo peppercorns, it's pretty much the best that we've got. So my grinder full of rainbow-hued peppercorns makes a definite statement. It tells people that I'm a dynamic, creative and energetic person. That I'm someone who embraces the richness of a multicultural society and all its glory. And I'm the staunch proponent of marriage equality. <laughs> this is where existentialism made its biggest mistake. My behaviour doesn't reveal my character. My peppercorns. <laughs> and as you can see, my pepper grinder is empty. So imagine my angst when I went down to Woolworths to buy a bulk jar of multicoloured peppercorns only to find that the shelves were bare. <laughs> well, when I say bare, there were actually dozens upon dozens of different varieties, but I couldn't buy a bulk jar of multicoloured peppercorns. All I could find were the plain black variety. I might just as well get the old grinder out of the pantry, set it down in front of my guests and say, Hi, my name's Ian, and I'm stuck in the 1980s. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm imploring Woolworths to set things right. Restore to me the dignity that only multicoloured peppercorns can afford. <laughs> Stock the products on your shelves that I demand and help me end my existential crisis. <laughs> I'm just <telling> you. <laughs>